Welcome to Dyson Sphere Program. Today's episode is going to be a little bit out of the ordinary um, because uh, we are starting out in a factory that does not belong to me. Peps, uh, one of uh, my uh, patrons, but also uh, a good friend of mine uh, who has clocked in something like 8 10,000 hours or something in Factorio. Uh, extensively. Uh, he's the Encyclopedia Factorio. Um, he recently started playing Dyson Sphere and uh, Peps is known for uh, doing, um, shall we say, uh, funky things. And uh, of course, he uh, couldn't resist doing funky things when he uh, made this factory uh, as well. So. Uh, this definitely uh, needs to be uh, showcased. I'm sure we'll see more shenanigans from Peps in the future. So we're on this little uh, island here uh, with some copper veins. Uh, I'm noticing that he has some very uh, funky <laughs> uh, amounts of uh, resources. I think he's set things to be infinite, uh, which is uh, fun for, especially for uh, for a new game. But yeah, let's uh, head on up towards the uh, craziness of... Uh... <laughs> okay, so uh, Peps has not been using any kind of logistics and has made a bus. Now, I, I'm not sure what to say about this bus, but uh, it certainly is original. And this is the maximum height you can get your belts at. Uh, and I love these spirals going up. They remind me of the uh, the spiral lifts that we had to use in Satisfactory back before they added lifts to that game. Uh, but this is just... I I don't even know what to, to say. I, th I think this actually goes around the entire planet. Uh... Yes. Yes, it does. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Here we are back at the science area. So Peps is currently working on upgrading the belts. Uh, I'm sure he's quite happy with the, uh, the new upgrade function. Because upgrading this without that, I'm not sure I would enjoy that very much. Um... Yeah, here we have some uh, thermal power stations, uh, plenty of uh, matrix labs. Uh, this one seems to be doing uh, science, these stacks where these are producing the uh, red and blue cubes. There's some local production for the uh, mats that are required for that, which I guess is not that bad of an idea to have local production of things. Um, Hydrogen on the bus, graphite on the bus, and then ores mostly, yep, and uh, refined oil. Yeah, this, this definitely makes sense to just transport those around and then have local production of uh, whatever you need in the various areas. This looks to be... Uh, yeah, this is a mall area. So here we have production of uh, the basic items that is needed. Local production of the graphene for the uh, blue belts. Well, it's gonna take a while, I guess. Yeah, I think it would be... Oh, I love that. I love these. <laughs> these are so cute. <laughs> That's just adorable. It's going to take a while when uh, you only have one of these. Uh, the ratio is two to one on, on those, so... But I don't think ratios have been a concern here. Uh, I think just having fun, building things in a crazy manner, which definitely has been a success. We have some... Uh, Solar panels here, some uh, refineries, uh, 
making the uh, hydrogen and the oil. Oh, interesting. It doesn't affect the... Uh, or does it? No, it doesn't affect the... Uh, even if it's at infinite resources, the oil seats still are quite low on their uh, output. Because that's basically what I have on my output. Some more refineries here. Yeah, the mall seems to be a, a larger area. They're producing various items at various locations uh, beside this uh, huge bus. I don't think he has expanded to any of the other planets yet. I think it's just doing things on this planet now. I love how games like this just let you do crazy things like this. Uh, kind of at a loss for words. These spirals. It could make you kind of dizzy. Effective use of stacking splitters as well. This one is fun. One simple storage container that then puts it out onto the uh, bus. So yeah, if you have questions about uh, Pep's uh, factory, feel free to uh, to tag him in uh, in our Discord server. You'll find the link to the Discord server in the description. Uh, he is uh, often around every day and. Uh, I am sure he will be very, very happy to uh, answer any questions about this, uh, well, I guess this is kind of obligatory, this tentacled madness of a base. I'm so happy, Peps, that you, uh, that you made a, a monument to tentacles, and what a monument it is. Yeah, okay, uh, I'll pause the recording and then I'll be right back in my own base. All right, so here we are. Now, what I wanted to do primarily in this episode, I don't think this will be as long an episode as uh, the others usually are, because what I wanted to do in this episode is just uh, show you guys uh, what I've done uh, outside of the mall, because uh, that episode got kind of uh, squished because the mall was such a... Uh, well, kind of a large undertaking to... Uh, to make uh, and mind you I'd already done it once but I didn't notice the one little issue I had with the iron belt that I had to stretch down to where was it here this one I didn't notice that when I practice built it um, but I'm sure there are better ways to do this so that you can get room for the um, assembling machine i'll i'll revisit this expect a mall mark 3 episode at some point uh that will include end game products as well uh, but that will probably be a little bit into the future maybe a week or two so let's go have a look at the poll or oh, we can stop here this area is I like to build my uh, production lines near to the pole, uh, but I'm very specific about building them inside of their respective grid segments so that I don't get any uh, weirdities. And one way to easily discover a grid segment is to use landfill. You can see this grid segment ends there and this one starts here because you can see that it doesn't want to overlap. This segment goes up to here, and sometimes here, since one factory line is on the other side of this segment, it's fine. And this segment is just three, and now it's difficult to see because I've already placed down landfill, but you can barely see it. But this is just one, two, two and a half. 
this segment is one and a half and so forth so yeah i'm i have a whole ring of accumulators on each pole so i have uh 21.8 gigajoules of accumulated power and i'm producing 524 megawatts of course that fluctuates slightly with the inclination of the planet towards the sun but that's not a problem so i have uh a lot of solar panels uh, and I'm probably going to have to remove this the four innermost maybe even more of them on each pole when I need more space here for things like ray receivers and stuff like that I don't know exactly all the things that I need to put in the bowl but uh, it's not a big problem to remove the innermost uh, rings it's not that many panels back to this what I'm doing here is producing, um, that one is set to the wrong recipe. Here I'm producing diamonds using just direct insertion from uh, coal on this belt, directly inserting the uh, graphite into the uh, smelter that is generating the diamonds. And then going back into this interstellar logistics station and as you can see, I'm using logistics stations excessively now. Uh, they are just so nice to do, to use. Uh, someone commented in regards to them all that uh, with all those logi towers, that would be a major power drain. But in, in reality, it is not really that much of a power drain. I mean, you could, I could increase the charging power, which would drain more power. But um, if you look at my. Uh, consumption it's not really that bad 130 to 140 megawatts and i have a lot of these towers like if i go into map view you can see there are towers everywhere on the planet uh i'm using them on basically every uh the production line and stuff like that and here we have the uh photon combiners i have one full production line of those uh we have four assemblers making the uh, plasma exciters since the plasma exciters are only used for two things which is namely the wireless power towers and um, what was the other one wireless power towers and oil refineries i didn't see the need to set up more than that because these produce a total of uh, 120 these four together it's 30 per so yeah then i have a line of prisms uh that should be it's 30 so it's actually producing 1800 which is one mark three belt uh i didn't really see the need to produce many prisms or i didn't think but then i realized that the photon combiners uh, they need them and until i could get um uh, those purple rare crystal thingies which i'll have to go to a different system to find i need the prisms to produce these because these photon combiners are used in things like solar sails and the solar sails are well pretty important here we have a full line of uh, assemblers making the particle containers uh, now these only produce 15 per minute so i'm not producing 1800 i'm producing 900 but I have room to set up one additional line of those so that I can uh, have uh, a full 1800 production of it should I need it. They are needed for uh, certain very important things. Um, most importantly, I would like to research something. Uh, what they are used for uh, is not these, Where are those? These, the strange matter. And the strange matter is something that we uh, definitely need uh, because that is used for warping. Uh, so let's research the miniature particle collider. Uh, now you can see the research is going a bit faster than it used to. Might have something to do with the fact that I have 20 labs 
doing research. Over here, we have a simple line making uh, titanium alloy. And this is the max uh, for one line because of the output. Uh, now, this would be better uh, if I could find a planet with sulfuric acid seas because sulfuric acid is a pain to uh, manufacture. We have two full lines of 60 refineries each doing the basic uh, recipe for uh, refining, which is the plasma refining. I am not doing any x-ray cracking currently because I have so much hydrogen in excess. I haven't started using it yet. So this here are uh, thermal power stations burning excess hydrogen. That is their only purpose, to burn excess hydrogen. I also set up a couple of assemblers, 10 of them, making the uh, hydrogen fuel rods, which have been pretty nice. That is the only thing that I set up off camera that um, isn't. Well, the accumulators too, I guess, but... but um, that's the only production line that is new. Um, all of the oil seeps have been uh, hooked up to logistic stations uh, and the refinery logistic stations are requesting the crude oil. I don't know if I have enough crude oil on the planet to support another one of these. Um, they are very time-consuming to build full lines of these because of the filters and the uh, the um, sorters. Uh, and I had to take a break after I did this because that was not pleasant for my wrist. Uh, and uh, I have to do some stretching exercises. I hope they add some kind of copy-paste function. Um, but as I've mentioned before, I really don't want blueprints. But then again, I don't see exactly how blueprints would work here because of the um, the um, planetary uh, inclinations where the grid becomes smaller and smaller the closer you get to the pole. I mean, if I took that blueprint there and placed it up there, uh, it probably would just say cannot place because the distance would be wrong between the buildings. This area we are producing uh, plastic is the first part uh, and I'm just doing the plastic belts directly to the uh, chemical plants doing the uh, organic crystals and the excess is put into the tower over here so I have full load of both plastic and organic crystal. I'm not sure if the plastic is necessary for much else than the organic crystals. Now oh, the particle glider is done. Let's do the uh, strange matter next to them. Um, according to my reference sheet... Ah, yeah, it's used for uh, something that looks like fiber optic cables. So, I might actually need that. The water needed for the crystals is being extracted here. This is, of course, one of my charging areas. Do I have anything else near this pole that is worth mentioning? No, we're back here. Yeah, here I'm making the uh, sulfuric acid, uh, which required a bit more of the water extraction. Um, this is my new research area. Uh, this is where I'm going to do all of my research. Might add more of the matrix labs if necessary, but for now I'm just requesting the cubes and producing them elsewhere. I have the two belts ready for the purple and the green cubes. I've mostly gotten rid of everything that was here, which I'm very happy for. Here I'm making some raw glass. Here is where I'm making the landfill. I'm mining some stone locally, but I also am requesting them. No, I'm actually supplying. And then I'm requesting the stone bricks, which is what is necessary for the landfill, of course. 
This tower is requesting iron ore and... No, it's supplying iron ore because I have iron mines connected to it. Uh, so I have a smelting line first for uh, iron ingots. And then on the other side I have a tower that is requesting the ore. And here I'm doing the same thing, direct insertion of plates into steel so that I make steel. And I have two lines of that making steel. Up here we have two lines making uh, copper. Not sure why I haven't filled it out. Because I have plenty of copper ore to spare. But yeah, I might have to fill it out. Not that you need that much copper ingots, but it's still useful. Most of the veins on the planet have been connected up with the local logistics tower supplying. And then I build production lines elsewhere. Here, for instance, I have one that is... Uh, oh, this one I can clear and reset now. This one is supplying ore and uh, crude oil, um, which is then requested in at locations where I'm smelting. This thing I need to tear down. This is an old setup uh, where I don't like to build north-south. I like to build east-west, uh, so this needs to be modified. Here we're producing some graphite, uh, we're mining coal, which is going through there. And I probably should... No, I'm mining enough. No, I should actually put that into the tower. Because I don't think... I think I am producing more coal here than... Or maybe not, since they are all producing. Oh should be fine then. Finding some more iron here, smelting the uh, magnets. Uh, here I'm making some stone bricks. Small assembly line here. This is a full assembly line with a Mark III belt. You can have 15 of these assembling machines due to the requirements of 120 magnets per assembling machine Mark II. And 120 times 15, I believe, should be 1800. So this tower is just requesting magnets and copper ingots and supplying the uh, magnetic coils. Strange matter, very good. Uh, I also want to research the uh, mini fusion power generation because maybe that would help with using some of the hydrogen. Now, the one thing that I haven't shown on this planet is the uh, science setup. Ah, there it is. I am... To get the correct ratio here, I should have 40 of these instead of 10. But these require diamonds and titanium crystals. And I don't think I can support... 40 of these. I haven't done the math, but I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I can't. So, uh, but I am producing enough of these. That, <laughs> hydrogen, not a problem. I could probably have 200 of these without that being a problem. So, yeah. But one thing that I could do is go down to 5 blue and 10 red, uh, 20 yellow, uh, but it's strictly not that necessary and science per minute which is a, an important metric in Factorio I don't think it's that important in this game at least not yet let's pop on over to one of the other planets I have not started uh, exploiting the gas giant yet which I apparently have come into the uh, influence of the gravity well of so let's try to avoid that there we go and now let's warp or rather not warp but increase our sail speed I am burning these uh, hydrogen fuel rods and I'm quite happy with them they seem to last as long as uh, 30 of those seem to last as long as a stack of 100 um, graphite Okay, now on this planet, I am exploiting massively. Uh, here is a stone production line. 
uh, iron production line and a steel production line. Everything going into this one. And it's supplying them. Uh, this is one of the old setups. I need to modify this. Here again, we are supplying... Ah, uh, fusion power reaction done. Uh, I should get the high strength material. So producing some iron here. And again, we have plenty of solar. But I don't have accumulators on this planet, which I probably should get since we are lacking satisfaction. Uh, I should probably also add more solar. Um, mining. As on the other planet, I mine it locally and then pull it over to uh, an area where I do smelting. Like this area here, for instance. I'm smelting lots of iron and some copper. There are still veins that I haven't tapped on this planet. Uh, ample of them, actually. So that's something that I need to, uh, to do more with. Here we're making magnets, copper, and more magnets. A plenty. And then we have the other pole. Uh, and I really need to extend uh, solar on this planet because I have way too little power here. Uh, let's go on over to the production area of this planet. That should be over there. So here I have lots of towers requesting. And this one is... I don't know why I built it that far away, but... So here we have some massive production lines. I'm making gears, I'm making uh, magnetic coils, I'm making the uh, electromagnetic turbines, and I'm making hyper, no, super magnetic rings. So this production... Mark 1 belt. Why on earth is this the Mark 1 belt? Everything should be on Mark 3 belts. Well, I'm not going to fix that now. Uh, thank you. Particle broadband. Yeah, I want that one as well. I haven't torn down this wind farm yet. So we have another line of gears, another line of magnetic uh, coils. Down here we have two lines. Uh, where one of them is producing the electric motors. And that's being sent back to the... Uh, I don't remember which one. I think it is that one, actually. Yep. And then we have a dedicated line for the electromagnetic turbines. I need more of these, so I'm not sure if this is necessary. Then we are producing circuit boards, a plenty of those, two full uh, production lines, or maybe even three, or is it four? Yeah, that's four. I have four production lines of, uh, of uh, circuit boards. And those I'm sending to that station there, and that station there. And the reason I want to have them in two is because each of these only has 10 of these uh, logistics vessels and it would, of course, others, the receiving stations also has logistic vessels, but it's nice to have these available. Then I thought there was a ratio on the uh, microcrystalline components to the uh, processors, but I realized that that ratio is dependent on having Mark III assemblers available. Because if you have Mark III assemblers available, you can... How, how did I... 45, 90... I don't remember the math here. I'm looking at the numbers, but... Each of these produce 30 per minute. Whereas these require 20 per minute. And I couldn't find a way to connect them up gracefully with direct insertion. So 
I am producing the microcrystalline components on each side. And we have the particle control technology. I don't know if I need these just yet. That one I would definitely like. Requires processors. So let's get that so I can start with the purple cubes. So I'm sending those back into the tower, which is probably a waste, but uh, still, well, that's what I'm doing. And then out again into these lines where I'm producing processors, where I have two full lines of uh, assemblers doing that, which means that I think I'm producing 20, there's a 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, that, yeah, it's 20.5, I believe. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20 and a half. So I have, how much does that make? Let's see. 21 times 2 is 42, of course, times 20, so I'm making 840 or 820, since it's a half uh, processors here. I will very, very likely need uh, a lot more of those. Those are a highly used component in the game. Now, all of these are, of course, set to uh, remote supply, so I have stuff that I'm making on this planet that I'm sending off to the other planets, and then it's also very nice to watch all these logistics uh, drones and vessels doing things all the time. This planet is very active in that regards. I don't think there's anything else that I want to show on this specific planet. Just make a mental note of getting lots of and fill I, how much I have 600k soil pile okay let's head on over to the last planet there it is this planet was basically not developed at all I don't think I had anything there when uh, before I started the mall, the mall was basically what triggered me to realize that I need that planet. music is very soothing hence my quietness reminds me a bit of the lunar, lunar music in Anno 2205 which is a, one of the nicest soundtracks I can think of okay, so this planet was a bit of a problem for me in regards to power um, so I actually have more power here than I have on the uh, planet we were just at uh, the reason for that is that the intensity here is just 67%, whereas on the lava planet it's 133%. So I have accumulators here, and those accumulators have been very important. They have 18 gigajoules of power. Most of the planet is basically pulling the resources and uh, supplying them. But in the end, I well, you might be wondering why I'm supplying these. To interstellar but that is because of uh, smelting going on on both of the other planets let's have a look here information matrix done quantum chip uh, there was something else I want yeah I want this the high strength lightweight structure so we have a charging point here that we are going to stop at Building like this is nice. I think you could even fit more of them if you want to uh, charge even quicker. So we have silicon smelting here, and then we take those into this tower where we uh, then...
yeah, I take some of it out again. And I smelt that into uh, crystal silicon, which is needed for certain parts, like for instance the um, particle broadband. So I probably need a more more lines of these. And most of it, as you can see, is just basically uh, mining the various resources, hooking them up to uh, to these towers. This planet is dark. This I can tear down. Not using it anymore. Supplying stone to the other planets. Then I have some smelting lines here for iron ingots. Four of them actually. Of course they are they're inactive now. But if I set this to 10 hours, uh, you can see that... Oh yes, I have fire ice on this planet, which is important. If 10 hours is probably too long. Well... I guess not. I guess they haven't registered. Not sure why. Maybe I just don't need it then, uh, at the moment. At least it's more than one hour ago. And we have some titanium ingot smelting arrays here. And since I had fire ice here, not that much of it. I have uh, 1.2 millions. Uh, it should last me for a while, of course, but... Uh, Getting more of it? Yes, yes, please. I'm producing graphene here because having to do more sulfuric acid uh, when I have fire ice available? I don't think so. The excess hydrogen is being sent to this splitter. This splitter prioritizes the tower, but the tower is full. And any excess hydrogen is being burnt in this rather excessive array of... Uh, thermal power stations but as you can see the belt is I might need to add even more of them because I did discover that this burn time is not constant when there is enough power they burn slower so they don't stop burning altogether but they do burn slower if the satisfaction is uh, very low the higher the satisfaction, the faster they burn, and hydrogen has a burn time of 2.96 seconds, if at 100%, which means that it's one of these is burning 20.20, 20, no, yeah, one of these is burning 20.25 20 hydrogen per minute, if at 100%, which it is far from with 420 megawatts of generation on this planet. Anything else that I haven't shown? No. No. I think I've shown you everything. Note that I'm not using the concrete uh, foundations. I prefer to use the foundations that just flatten the land because the concrete looks ugly. But I did use it on the production area on the lava planet because the lava planet is even uglier than the concrete. So, yeah. Anyways, uh, that was a quick show you all what I'm doing kind of episode. Which in the end turned out to be just as long as the other one. Uh, or the regular episodes, actually, since we are nearing 40 minutes. Not sure if it was the most enjoyable episode in terms of nothing specifically new going on. But uh, hopefully you still enjoyed it. Uh, no, no. Oh, I should definitely get that one. And that one. That one is actually very important. So yeah, um, I will research at least... I, th I think that even though I'm not recording, I will just finish all of the researches that I can do with, uh, with uh, the current cubes I have. 
Um, and I I do want to catch up with uh, with stuff, but one of the things that I think we should start, or one of the things that I'm considering for the next episode is gas giant exploitation. Um, I want to experiment a bit with uh, the particle collider and making strange matter. Uh, and I want I I'm not. Yeah, I, I need to make uh, the, um, oh, these are quite diamonds. Well, that's not a problem. Uh, I need to make space warpers as well. And this unlocks the green research too. I'm surprised that I don't need... Purple science gives for that. Huh. Well, I do because I can't research it without the quantum chip. So, never mind. But yeah, uh, gas giant exploitation. Uh, setting up some um, of those uh, tasty uh, EM rail ejectors, making some solar sails. That's probably going to be uh, together with maybe some fusion power generation. Not that we need more power currently, but that's probably going to change very soon. Uh, I mean, I, I'm i not really doing the really power heavy stuff and I've heard rumors that the power that I'm producing is really rather uh, minuscule compared to what I'm going to need. But of course, that's when this nice little interstellar power transmission with the energy exchanger comes into the picture. But yes, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, give Peps uh, uh, a thumbs up for his uh, magnificent uh, tentacled factory. Uh, I have completed all of the uh, upgrades that I can complete with uh, the uh, science I currently have, by the way, just so you are aware of that as well. And if you have any questions or comments, then uh, feel free to uh, leave those in the comment section. As always, I read all of your comments and I respond uh, when I have time. Uh, and uh, I'm very grateful for the uh, comment interaction on the channel. So, with that, see you all next time.